Good morning. Why don't everybody that loves the Lord give the Lord a hand clap of praise? He is worthy to be praised according to the scriptures from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. His name is worthy to be praised. We are here today to celebrate uh, the life and legacy of one who lived well, the person of Sister Lucille Catherine Williams, uh, who served her family well, uh, served here uh, in this church, the Fairview Missionary Baptist Church, for, the program says, 75 plus years, uh, and who also served in the community, uh, very faithful. And so we're here today to celebrate her faithfulness. We're not here today because she died, but we are here today because we know the reality for the Christian is she lives. The Bible says that when we die, we are absent from the body and present with the Lord. The Apostle Paul said that when this earthly tent has been dissolved, I have another house not made by hands that's eternal in the heavens. And so we are here today to celebrate the life that she lived here on earth, but we're here today because she lives in eternity. She's resting in the arms of Jesus. If you believe that and you're grateful for that, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. We will follow our program uh, as printed. Uh, the only time you will see me come back uh, to have anything to say as it relates to the program is when we get to the remarks, but other than that, we will follow our program as printed. Let's say amen. Our Old Testament scripture reading will come from Job chapter 1, verses 20 through 22. Then Job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head, and, and he fell to the ground and worshiped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I sh shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin, nor charge God with wrong. Amen. Our New Testament scripture is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So read the word of God, and so shall it be. Bless the name of the Lord. Let us go to the throne of grace. Most gracious and our eternal Father, Lord, we come now and simply bow in humble submission to your will for the life of our sister, Sister Lucille Williams, Lord, who made a choice to live for you. And so, Lord, now we're praying for the family. Father, any of those who have not made that choice, those who need to know you in the pardon of sin, Lord, I pray that they will do it right now because the next second is not promised. And so, Lord, just simply be the God of all comfort to them. You said you would comfort us, Father, with the same comfort that you have comforted others with in their time of sorrow. And so, Lord, I pray in the coming days, weeks, months, and years that they would continue to look unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of their faith. 
Lord, continue to bear them up and allow them to know that truly you are their strength and their redeemer. You are their ever-present help in the time of trouble, and when all else fails, they can lean and depend on you. And so, Lord, I pray that you would keep your ever-loving arms of protection around them, your hand of mercy upon them, and the Spirit of God within them to guide them. For truly you are our God, and we are your people. We ask it all now in that blessed, powerful, matchless, and mighty name of Jesus, the only name given among men by which a man can be saved. In Jesus' name and sake we pray. Amen and amen.
First, I do want to give honor to God and to Pastor Reed and to all the pulpit and to the Williams family and to my classmates, Sister Loretta Stinson and Reverend Melton Williams. My name is Helen Cole, Pastor Helen Cole of the Prince of Peace Ministries. And I'm going to read the resolutions. We're going to ask the class of 1966, would you please stand at this time? Class of 66, all right. Celebrating the life of Mrs. Lucille K. Williams. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4, 14 through 18. We pray today that you are comforted by the words of our Lord in Revelations 21 and 4, which says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. For as we, the Oklahoma City Douglas High School class of 1966, and fellow classmates of our own, Jody L. Stinson and Milton L. Williams, wish to express our deepest sympathy to you and your family. Please do not mourn as those who have no hope, but as those who expect to meet with your mother again in that glorious, place called heaven. God has given your mother, your, God has taken your mother from the suffering and sorrows of this world to that new world of sweet peace. And for this we are thankful. And family, God has promised that he will not leave you comfortless but he through the Holy Spirit will bring you heavenly peace and comfort. Be it therefore resolved that the scripture has been fulfilled for Mrs. Lucille K. Williams. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it, Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. Weep if you must for Mrs. Williams' earthly departure, but you may rejoice with great hope for her heavenly destination. Humbly submitted this 21st day of May in the year of our Lord, 2021, by the classmates of the Douglas High School class of 1966, Norris D. Williams, class president, Regina Thomas West, vice president, Milton W. Williams, senior class chaplain, Sandra Curtis Jefferson, Chaplain, Secretary. Thank you. Resolution from True Vine Ministries, Incorporated, 3701 North Spencer Road, Spencer, Oklahoma, May the 21st, 2021. To the family of Lucille K. Williams, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, 14. Whereas God in his infinite wisdom has silenced another familiar voice, we bow in humble submission to him who doeth all things well. In this world, we shall have sorrows, but earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal or tears that God can't wipe away. The True Vine Ministries family extends its deepest sympathy, love, and support to Milton and Barbara Williams, beloved and faithful members of our church, and their entire extended family in this most difficult hour. 
We know you're loved, we know you loved Lucille and will miss her, but just remember you are not alone. Weep not as those who have no hope, but rather lean on the promise of God's word, for he promised never to leave nor forsake you. The good news of the gospel is this. Jesus has provided eternal life for those who trust him as savior, and the Father will receive us with a well done, thy good and faithful servant. Our family will continue to pray for your family in the days to come. If you need prayer, a hug, or just someone to talk to, we stand ready to serve you in the days ahead. We pray that this season in your life will soon give way to hope in the knowledge of God's eternal love. Be it resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy be placed in the church files. Prayerfully submitted, True Vine Ministries Incorporated, Reverend C.J. Lubin, Pastor. Fairview Missionary Baptist Church, 1700 Northeast 7th Street, Oklahoma City. John A. Reed, Jr., Senior Pastor, Reverend Derek E. Walter, Senior Assistant Pastor. Expressions of comfort to the family of Sister Lucille K. Williams. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Matthew 25, 23. Whereas God in his infinite wisdom has accepted into his presence a good and faithful servant, our beloved Sister Lucille K. Williams, the Fairview family join with you today and offer our love and support. We understand the deep loss you may be experiencing, and while we share in your sorrow today, we celebrate her victory. Sister Williams labored here a long time, and now God has given her rest. She fought the good fight. She finished the course. She kept the faith. Sister Williams was one of the oldest and longest tenured members of Fairview, having been a part of our family for over 70 years. A time here was one of commitment and faithfulness. Faithful to her God, faithful to her pastors, and faithful in ministry. She was a long-standing member of the women's ministry and was active in the Sunday school. She raised her children and grandchildren in the church to fear God. We realize that the links of your family chain has been broken several times within the past few years but we trust that you will rely on the knowledge that God's way is perfect. As Christians, we rest in the promises we find in his word, knowing that all things work together for the good of those who love him and trust in him. Sister Lucille's work here is done. Weep if you must, but not as one without hope. If you are in Christ, you will see her again. You can rest in the promise and hope of the great resurrection which the Apostle Paul recorded in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will be the first to rise. After that, we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord forever. Until that day, seek comfort in God's holy word. Rest in his word. Trust his word. Lean on him. God will always be there for you, even in your darkest hour. Take comfort and strength from his presence. Prayerfully submitted this 21st day of May, the year of our Lord, 2021. Pastor John A. Reed, Jr., and the Fairview Baptist Church family. The acknowledgement as recorded on the program reads, the family of Lucille K. Williams wishes to express several special thanks to Dr. W.B. McLeod III, Joe Reed, Helen Robinson, Select Home Health, Palliative Care, Kindful Hospice, and all of the friends and church members that sent get well cards and also to Bonnie Yvonne Bryson and Pastor Reed and the Fairview family 
for all of the many acts of kindness that the family and many friends of Lucille Williams. God bless you, family. Let us all say amen. amen. I was asked to read this, by, read this uh, by a precious mother sitting over there from California. Is that okay, Pastor? Yes. Okay. Okay, it says, at this difficult time, my family, may you find divine resources to be your complete help, and may you not rest in, and may you rest in the assurance God will work everything out for good. In memory of Aunt Lucille, from Maceo Bell, Oakland, California. Amen, let's all say amen. amen. The program now calls for remarks. Uh, we want to uh, inform you that we are uh, still practicing our uh, protocols here as it relates to CDC. And so we have to be as efficient as possible. And so with that being said, uh, as, as it relates to remarks, we're not gonna leave it open uh, we're going to allow three people, uh, we've already spoken with the son and two others to have remarks and we're going to ask you if you will please ma'am, please sir, to be as brief as possible uh, with your remarks. We know there's a lot that could be said about Sister Williams because she was a great woman, but uh, we want to leave uh, Pastor Reed enough time to properly eulogize uh, Sister Williams. So if you will, we're going to ask you to cooperate with us. The Bible says things are to be done decently and in order. And so we just ask you to do that for us. We'll have three, and those three, please be as brief as you possibly can, all right? Good afternoon. I'm Michael Potts. I'm a, a nephew. Um, my mother and sister send their love. They were un unable to, to attend today. But I'm going to read something th that, uh, for my mother. But first, when I think about my Aunt Lucille, I think about a fashionista. I, I always remember her dressing up, you know, with those nice outfits, all the accessories to match. And that's how I'm going to remember her. And the style points in heaven just went up. Cause <laughs> I'm going to read this from my mother. Uh, my, my Aunt Lucille was an amazing woman, a joy, a voice to be heard. She was kind and encouraging, considerate, helpful, and strong, a phenomenal woman. When she and Uncle R.D. went to San Angelo to care for my, for my Aunt B and Dolores, and Uncle Lo, she and, she and Uncle R.D. had to put their life in Oklahoma City on hold. I had the honor to spend time with her at our reunion in San Marcos. We shared a room together. Aunt Lucia was strong. She was in her 90s. I had to be pushed in a wheelchair. She walked around the reunion. You should have seen them. Aunt Lucille in her 90s, walking down the hall, racing my mother. I'm pushing my mother in the wheelchair. Aunt Lucille is winning. <laughs> uh, they shared a room together. Even though she was in her 90s, they were in a handicapped room. Aunt Lucille could still get into the bathtub, get out of the bathtub. My mother, at the time, she needed assistance to get in and out of the bathtub. I think living in that two-story house, going up and down those stairs to her bedroom each and every day made her a strong woman. This showed me that exercise can get me back on my feet and back walking. She was an encouragement to me and should be to you. She was a phenomenal woman. And that's from Miss Beatrice Potts. Thank you.
I give honor to God, to the pulpit, to my family, to everyone that's here today. I thank God for the memories of my cousin Lucille. She's been here for us for so many years, I just praise God for it. On May 13th, that was my late mother's birthday. And uh, on that day, I went to a service of an eight-year-old boy, an autistic child who couldn't speak or understand. It was a kind of sad day for me. But on the way home, somebody texted me that, praise God, my cousin Lucille had gone home. I said, Lord, you got to help me. What picked me up was something I heard in the word of God about what he promised those that love him, those that do his saying, those that do his will. And when I thought about Cousin Lucille, I believe she was that kind of woman. What the Lord promised to those who love him, these old bodies of clay that we have down here, that's plagued with arthritis, heart disease, lupus, diabetes, so many afflictions. If we hold on and make it to that place called heaven, he promised us that he's going to have some glorified bodies. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And when I think about Cousin Lucille, I had to pick myself up and say, thank you, Jesus. She's on her way to a glorified body. I might have to stand down here and limp a while. Hallelujah. But up there, hallelujah, I believe it's great rejoicing. People saying hallelujah to the King of kings, Lord of lords. And I call his name Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for my cousin Lucille. And when I think of her life, it makes me the more want to live a saved and a holy life. So that one day the Lord can say to me, well done, thy good. Hallelujah and faithful servants. Pray my strength in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, good morning. First, I want to say, first, giving honor to God, and I have so many those that I want to thank, but I want to thank God first. Because through him, this is not a funeral service. This is a celebration. I just wanted to get that straight. First, I'd like to thank Pastor well, excuse me. First, I'd like to thank my sister, Loretta, and her granddaughter, Vi, and her right hand, Bonnie, because they took care of mom 24-7. Loretta was there, 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 all the time, and Vi was there with her. My wife and I, we tried as much as we could at it distance in Oklahoma City, but when somebody's right there in the room, can't go nowhere because they taking care of their loved one, that's dedication. So I just wanted to say thank you to my sister. And now I want to say thank you to Pastor Reed and Pastor Walters and all of the Fairview family. Brother Bob Simmons right here and Sister Patterson that helped us navigate not only through this service but other services that the true that the Fairview family have helped us with.
And I want to say thank you to uh, my sister, my, my, my sister-in-law, Pamela Williams, and her kids, Michael and Elizabeth, that drove down from North Dakota. And we want to give them a big shout out to Pam. Happy birthday. Because they had gathered together in North Dakota for Pam's birthday. And then mom, well, the Lord said it's time. So they came to celebrate with us from North Dakota. And then Pam and Roy, Morgan from Houston, and John and his son and grandson from Little Rock, Arkansas. And of course, Mike that spoke up here just a few minutes ago. And then so many, because these families that came, Pam and Roy, they represent the Manjang side of the family. And John and Mike represents the Hodge part of the family. And I mention that because Mom's, one of her main things was family reunion. Also, I'd like to thank my True Line family. So much support from the church and Pastor Lubin. And then I'd like to thank my classmates, Douglas High School class of 66, of whom I'm so honored to be chaplain. And last but not least, John Temple and Temple and Sons. They have treated us with so much care. And we just like to say thank you. I'd just like to get those out of the way. Now, and I'll be brief as I can, Pastor. Uh, it's not easy to find and narrow down memories when you've had a mom that was so active and, and doing so many things as Mama Lucille. But I'm just going to try to cover this briefly, if you, if you allow me. Uh, this was kind of one of the things that I always wondered about growing up uh, as Loretta and I and my older brother and our younger sister, Arneza, uh, started sprouting out and having families. Uh, my older brother, Ronnie, and younger sister, Arneza, chose California for their home. So when, we come, when they come back on holidays, then, of course, families go to church, right? Right? Okay. So one Sunday, we would go to church with Daddy at Avery Chapel. Another Sunday, we would come here to Fairview with Mama Lucille. So I asked my daddy one time, I said, Daddy, that's after I got old enough to ask a question like this, uh, why is it that you and Mama Lucille don't go to the same church? Because, you know, they were so tight, they did everything together and everything else. And he told me, he said, when I grew up, the men were Methodists and the women were Baptists. So I just left it at that. But one thing they had in common, they were both hard workers for the Lord in their churches and in their communities. Another thing that we found out uh, as we were preparing services at, uh, with John, Mr. John Temple, is that he said, Mama Lucille wanted this statement. May the work I've done speak for me. She wanted us to understand that. Well, when one of your loved ones pass, we go into what I call the hour of bereavement. And that covers a lot of soul searching. And, and, and there was been a lot of soul, did I do enough, should have done something else, on and on. You know all of what I'm talking about if you've lost a loved one, someone close to you. But one thing we did do, Mama Lucille would ask us very often, would you pray? Pray, and then sometimes pray for me. So if you're in that situation, prayer is the answer. Also, um, I just want to make one other little point here if I could. 
Mama Lucille, in so many ways, and like I said with, with Daddy, she was a woman of impact. She was a woman of determination. Uh, she's going to get it done, or somebody's going to get it done for her, or she's going to find some kind of way to get it done. I see no heads nodding out there, you know what I'm talking about. And you can see the proof on the program. Also, she was a woman of purpose. That was her life. And she asked me to work, she did. Speak for her. At age 95, she took her last road trip. That's the trip that Mike was up here talking about with his mom. When we went to Texas for our fat last family reunion that she had with all of our family. And she was an impact because she was determined, even at her age, to say to all of us, you can do this. You can get through life. You can depend on the Lord. You can make it. I can remember her riding in that van just sitting back like she was queen of the world. I asked the van people, to, the rental people, to give us a van with special seats. They gave us a regular old van with regular old seats. I was concerned, but she said, I'm just as comfortable. But now, she is comfortable. Now, she is home. Now, she is really having a family reunion. And as David said, they can't come back to us. We got to go to them. God bless you. Amen. The program now calls for a selection. And after that selection, we will hear from, from Pastor Reed. So let's be in prayer after the selection. program calls for a selection. Ma'am, I'm sorry. Oh, did I? I'm sorry. One of these old mornings I'm gonna sing and shout There'll be no one there To put me out No, there won't I'm going to a place Where there'll be nothing to do but just walk around heaven all day. When I get to heaven, I'm going to sing and shout. There'll be no one there. will be waiting for me there and my father too and we'll just walk around heaven all day
sunshine Sabbath will have no end and all I'll do all day is sing and praise your holy name and when you've said well done then my race this old that a race will be and we'll just walk around heaven. I'm gonna walk around, walk around heaven. I can't wait to see you, Jesus. Sad at your feet. I'm gonna praise your Father. Walk around heaven I'm gonna walk around heaven All day God bless all of you today, and <clears throat> grace and peace be to all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to all of our, our ministerial staff of our church and to all of you who are symbol here uh, today uh, to this family and to this daughter Loretta um, son Milton to all of these grandchildren and great grandchildren and great great grandchildren and all of uh, other members of the family cousins and nephews and nieces and all who are here to share in this homegoing celebration of this hour dear sister um, who has been called from labor to refreshment sister Lucille Williams precious soul um, one of the one of the beautiful um, things about uh, a long time pastoral ministry in a church is uh, the many people who touch your life and who help to to mold you and make you <clears throat> into becoming the kind of <clears throat> pastor that you that you are, <clears throat> um, Sister Lucille uh, is a part of that. Uh, one of <clears throat> of those great Christian women who passed this way through our church. And uh, the majority of them are in heaven now. But one who uh, took under their wings a young 
immature preacher, namely myself, and stood by me and with me through all of these years. And my immaturity and my mistakes that I made and on so many occasions, they were faithful to help make me. And I may not be much today, but thank God, I'm a mixture of those people like Lucille. And I will forever be grateful. Um, don't have much to say today because you don't have to. When, when a person has, has lived the kind of life that Lucille has lived, you don't have to try to help make up something. It's all there for you to see. If, you, if you've been acquainted with her, you know the kind of Christian that Lucille has been. And I'm, I'm grateful to have had the privilege of being her pastor had the privilege of, of ministering to her dear mother the last years of her life. As a matter of fact, uh, I was there in attendance for her 100th birthday. And my, I have a, a picture in my desk drawer right now. Uh, of that birthday party that I took with her on her 100th birthday. Uh, her dear husband, Brother R.D., was, although he was not a member of Fab, he was very special to me uh, as a pastor. And so, family, we, we owe a and on, on what I call an unpayable debt to Lucille Williams for, for the rich heritage that she had left us in, in thought, in word, and in deed. And I understand that your, your children, son, daughter, grandchildren, that you mourn the passing of your mother, your grandmother, your cousin. But you should rejoice in, in the companionship with her through these years and the very vivid memory of her upright life. And uh, we are grateful for her life, uh, for the high esteem in which uh, she was held by many people, for, for the loyal devotion to her family, and to her other relatives and a friend that you heard from today. And then all above that, Fairview family was her family. And naturally, she leaves us a rich heritage of, of good thoughts and kind words and humble deeds and faithful service. There's one port that I that I quote sometime, and uh, he 
said these words in a poem that you are writing a gospel, a chapter, a day. By work that you do and words that you say. It goes on to say that men read what you wrote. whether faithless or true. And it closes that poem with the sentence, what is the gospel according to you? Listen, um, our family, our church family has, has, has suffered today, y'all, a great loss. In, in the home going of Sister Lucille. Her, her loyalty, her, her, her faithfulness to this church uh, shall ever be a living memorial to her. And, and, and we thank God today just for the privilege of having known this, this fine and this this spiritual personality. And uh, if you notice in the obituary that over the years uh, she served in many capacities here at our church, a very faithful individual uh, in her attendance, uh, very faithful in her financial support and, and of course those of you who were here that that had the privilege of, of knowing her know that she that she was always willing to do her part and always cheerfully assumed any responsibility uh, which was hers uh, and I found her to be such a, uh, such a, to have such an unselfish and, and a, such a cooperative attitude. You know, you don't find everybody like that. Well, you all know what I'm saying. Uh, unselfish and, and cooperative in everything. I, I don't ever remember just not having, not just not one problem at all at any time with, with Lucille Williams. She, she, she was a, she, she was faithful. She was, she, 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 she was a woman of few words, but, but those few words were words of encouragement uh, that she shared with, with others, and she was always that way with me. Genuine, genuine humility. And you know, when you when you are genuinely un, uh, humble, uh, you a person that's never seeking recognition. You know, it, it makes no difference to you. You're not you're not in it for to be recognized. You 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 there to serve and to be faithful to the charge that the Lord has given you. Uh, and so she was a strong Christian, and we we will certainly here at Fairview remember her, uh, one whose devotion to Christ was and and always will be, uh, and and an inspiration and an example to those members here at our church. Good mother, uh, grandmother, and all of that. Uh, the writer in John, the writer John says, and, and I'm just, just a few minutes, uh, the writer of John says in Revelation, As a matter of fact, is the second chapter of Revelation, and 
and that tenth verse, uh, uh, the writer John, and you know why John Bible students had been placed on the Isle of Patmos, and and he was out there because of the active, uh, faithful preaching uh, of the Word of God, and he was he was placed out there in in exile. But, but and and these are his words. He said, he said right in out there uh, in, in a, on an island full of wild animals and all of that type of thing. Out there alone by himself, the Lord gave him inspiration uh, to write. And John writes these words, be thou faithful uh, unto death. And, and I will give you the crown of life. Be thou faithful. And, 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 and some words that I use all the time, and some of you have, have, have heard me use the word, keep the faith. And, and I say it quite often now to people, keep, keep the faith. John says, be thou faithful uh, unto death, and, and I'll, I'll give you a crown of life. Faithfulness, y'all is the criteria for Christian service. Faithfulness. Keep the faith. Be, 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 be faithful even if you have to die for it. Uh, uh, in other words, each, John was saying that each one of you must prove to be faithful even if you have to die. That, that's what he's saying. Keep, keep, keep faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith me to the point of death. And if you keep, be faithful to me at the point of death, then, then I'll, I'll give you uh, a crown of life. Now, 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 those of you who have, who have studied it, uh, what was happening and what was going on and what was transpiring uh, during this period uh, and, and during biblical times, uh, these words were sent uh, to the suffering saints at that time. They were, they were suffering from very uh, severe trials which seemed uh, would exalt their very life. And, and, and then came these words, be thou faithful. And of course, the promise uh, did not carry with it deliverance from the persecution, but it carried with it a word of encouragement to them who was going through the persecution. That that if, if they would just endure, in other words, y'all, if they would just hold on, and and if they would just hold out, uh, that 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 they would receive a crown of life. Hold on. Hold out. Receive a crown of life. Lucille have, have been holding on and holding out for 97 years. Holding on and holding out. Uh, Endurance. Sometimes it's a struggle to keep going. Do I have a witness here? So sometimes tears are in your eyes. Sometimes, sometimes you're severely suffering. But, 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 but John encouraged us and tell us, hold on. Uh, uh, keep, keep holding on. Don't, don't give up. Don't, don't give out. Don't quit. Just hold on. And, and if you hold on just a while longer, he says, I have a crown, a life waiting for you. Yeah, I've got something to give you. I, 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 I've got something I'm going to give you if you just hold on, hang in there, stay with it. That's, 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 that's what I want to leave with you today. All of you who are in here, hold on. Let, let, let Pastor Reed tell y'all. That, that steadfastness, that, that, that courage, that, that perseverance, uh, 
uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you hold on, uh, uh, you know, you, there's going to be a time of testing in all of your lives. Yeah, that, time is, that time is going to appear. That time is going to come. You, you're going to have times of testing. And, and I tell you, when time of testing comes, y'all, there's times when you want to give up. There, there, there are times when you want to throw in the child. There are times you say within yourself, what's the use of going on? Yes, sir. But then comes the words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, then comes the words, be faithful. Yes, be faithful. And, and I want to tell you all as I close the day, that that's all the Lord told us to do. Yes, that, that, that's all the Lord said, y'all. And, and, and Sister Lucille knew that. And she, she heard me say it from the pulpit uh, many times. That's all the Lord told us to do. And all he said, be faithful. He, he, you, you notice he hasn't said nothing else. He has not told us to do anything else but be faithful. And see, a whole lot of us out here trying to be popular. He, he, he never said be popular. As a matter of fact, all of us are trying to be successful, and we want everybody to recognize us. But Jesus never said anything about being successful. All he said, y'all, was be faithful. Be faithful. And I will give you a crown of life. And that's the most important thing about the Christian life is faithfulness. Standing true to Christ no matter what the circumstances may be. Y'all, I'm going to tell you, it costs to be a dedicated Christian. Y'all hear what I said? It costs. There, there's a price that you pay to be a dedicated Christian and that price that you pay is faithfulness. And, and, and let me remind y'all that pain is a part of life. But, but, but it's necessary to suffer no matter what the cause. And Jesus commanded his church for their faithfulness in suffering. And, and then he, he then encouraged the believers that they need don't not fear the future if they remain faithful. And the reason that you don't have to fear the future if you remain faithful is because what he promised. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do I have any Christians in here? I said because of what he has promised. And he said, be faithful and I will. I have a reward for you. And I don't know how you all feel and how you all are thinking about it, but I want my reward. Anybody in here like me? I, I want my reward. When I come down to the end of this life, when I must close my eyes, when I give up the ghost, I want my reward. And I want to hear that welcome voice coming from him saying, well done. My good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of the kingdom. And I want to be thanking him. Thank you. I don't know how you all are going to feel about it, but I'm going to say thank you. I'm going to say thank you. I'm going to say thank you. And I'm going to give praises to him for how long, Pastor Reed? Forever. And how long is forever? Forever. How long is forever, 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 and forevermore? And I count it a privilege to just be faithful. God bless you. God keep your family. Hang in there, Loretta. You've been hanging there for a long time. I know you're going to miss your mama. That's all right. Just be faithful. And you know what happened? You're going to meet her in a few days. It won't be long. It won't be long. You're going to meet her in, in a few days. Be faithful until the end. That's right, Milton.
You're always faithful to her. Keep on being faithful to one another. Stay together, family. Whatever you do, stay together as a family. And you will hear that same voice that she heard. Well done. Good and faithful servant. God bless you. Anything that fair you can do for you as you face the days ahead, don't fail to call up on us. We are here. We are family here, y'all. We're here. And we take care of and love and respect one another.